Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our gospel reading for today reminds us that sometimes there was conflict and division between Jesus and his family. Mark chapter 3 reads that Jesus' family went to take charge of him, for they said he is out of his mind. Presumably, it was Jesus' claim to be the Son of God that made his family think that he was out of his mind and needing their help. In time, much of his family would come to faith in him as the promised Messiah, but not on this day. On this day, there is conflict and division between Jesus and his family. They suspected that he was out of his mind. There also was conflict and division between Jesus and the teachers of the law who came down from Jerusalem. And their assessment of Jesus wasn't as kind as his family's assessment. He has an impure spirit, the religious leaders said of Jesus. He is possessed by Beelzebul, by the prince of demons, Beelzebul. He is driving out demons. The teachers of the law acknowledged that Jesus was indeed driving out demons, but they wrongly concluded that Jesus was able to do so because he himself was demon-possessed and filled with an impure spirit. There was conflict and division between Jesus and the teachers of the law who came down from Jerusalem. Jesus can still be a source of conflict and division in our world today. Some modern-day assessments of who Jesus is are kinder than others, but in the end, much of the world rejects him as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. They reject the heavenly wisdom he teaches us in the Holy Scriptures. Many see Jesus as less than the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Some withhold from Jesus the honor of acknowledging him as the sin-bearer of the world. Jesus can still be a source of conflict and division in our world today. Who Jesus is and what he says can even create conflict and division within our own hearts and minds. Christians can have doubts and uncertainties about Jesus. Conflict within. Will he keep the promises he's made to me? about forgiveness and a return in glory and everlasting life in heaven? Will he raise me from the dead like he himself was raised on Easter Sunday? Christians may wonder, is my trust and faith in Christ sufficient? Remember the man who brought his demon-possessed son to Jesus and said to him, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. He had conflict within. Jesus can create conflict within the heart of a Christian. Is my trust and faith in Christ sufficient? Or, the conflict and division that Jesus can create inside the heart of a Christian may look like this. We know what Jesus wants us to think and to feel and to say and to do, but a part of us may say, no, I don't want to. I don't want to think that way. I don't want to feel that way. I don't want to speak that way. I don't want to act that way. I don't want to be salt and light today. I don't want to be a peacemaker today. I don't want to pray for and love my enemies and do good to those who persecute me. Instead, I want the freedom to love myself more than I love God and to do what pleases me rather than what pleases Him. Even as Christians, who Jesus is and what he says can create conflict and division within our own hearts and minds. There's a part of us that wants to believe Satan's lies. Jesus can be a source of conflict and division in our world still today. But the good news for us is that there is no conflict and division between Jesus and the will of his Heavenly Father. Jesus knows exactly who he is and what he's doing and why he has been sent by God. Jesus and his Heavenly Father are like-minded, in sync, on the same page. 
Jesus is not out of his mind. He knows who he is and why his father sent him. And Jesus is not possessed by an impure spirit. The opposite is the truth. He is filled with the Holy Spirit. And Jesus is not in league with Satan. He is here to destroy Satan. To use the language of Genesis 3, Jesus is the promised descendant of Eve who will crush the head of the satanic serpent. To use the language of Jesus' parable in Mark 3, Jesus is here to bind the strong man Satan and rob his house of captured souls. Jesus is here to destroy the work of Satan. He does that by saying no to every temptation, remaining the sinless Son of God, and staying in sync with his Heavenly Father. Satan's ability to deceive is one of his strengths. But Jesus rightly identifies Satan as the father of lies, a liar and murderer from the beginning, murdering souls with his deceptions. Thanks be to God that the heavenly wisdom which guides Jesus is stronger than the devil's, the deceiver's craftiness. Jesus is here to destroy the work of Satan. He does that by saying yes to the cross. On the cross, Jesus took upon himself our guilt for all the times the conflicts within us have led us into sin. And we are forgiven by his atoning sacrifice. By his cross, Jesus takes away Satan's ability to accuse us of sin before God in heaven. And the dead and buried Jesus is stronger and mightier than the grave rising to renewed life and health on Easter Sunday. The risen and ascended Jesus is our advocate, the righteous one who speaks to the Father in our defense. He reigns today and forever as King of kings and Lord of lords. This is good news for us. Still today and forever, there is no conflict and division between Jesus and the will of his heavenly Father. Jesus and his heavenly Father are like-minded, in sync, on the same page, and because of that, we will live forever in heaven. When you were baptized, the Holy Spirit made you a part of God's family of believers. On that day, you became, by the gift of faith, brothers and sisters of Christ. And Jesus looks at you, his church, and thinks, here are my brothers and sisters. So don't be afraid to walk with Jesus today and be like-minded with him, in sync with him and on the same page. You can trust his wisdom and guidance and the words that he's given us in the Holy Scriptures. He will help you to make the most of every opportunity that God sets before you this week. And when your life here is done, Jesus will lead you safely to your eternal home in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. May the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.